This is one of the greatest outrages of our time. This is the the modern version of this is the 2023 version of this is the 2023 version of Champions Park. It's just this is an outrage, and we are many of us are not happy about this Van Gogh Pikachu. I'm gonna Van Gogh do something about it. Good morning, everybody. If you're in America, good evening. And if you're a European or you're a British person watching from the UK, real one. I did this for you. Technically, this is for you guys because I know I know how late it is for you. It's like, what, 11 p.m.? That's fine. On a Saturday night, we're good. You're good for that. You can stay up a little bit later tonight. And it's been a while since I've done a European UK friendly stream as well. So it's been a while since I've come back to streaming. I think it was like a three week break there. Sorry about that. What happened? I lost my voice for like two weeks. It was really bad. It's just like real croaky. Couldn't talk for more than like 20, 30 minutes without it really hurting. So I didn't stream for a bit. And then I was working on stuff. I don't even, whatever. He's making excuses. Welcome back everybody. Good to see you again. He's so back. We are, yeah. So now we're actually so back. We're actually so back now. I can hear myself. That's awkward. There we go. <laughs> I have the stream playing in the background. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. I'm not stealing that from Wasi. It's just that there's a lot of people from a different time zone right now. It's been a hot minute. How you all going? Samuel Plank, good to see ya. Hector H, what's good? Kygus, thank you for being a... Oh, thank you for 12 months of Sensei. Thank you very much, Kygus. He's a real one. Kygus is a real one. He's been here for the long... He's been here from day one. He's like definitely like a... Day one, you know, you know, day one sub over at Twitch. We'll talk about Twitch a little bit later. Hey, all doing? Son of a mer, good to see you, man. Aseri, how's it going? Jarzard, cookies. Mo, thank you for your help. Java Trico, this will distract me from Collingwood winning a grand final. We had our biggest sporting event of the year here in Australia. So it was the Australian football league. Is AFL? You know, we have football here, but it's not like NFL. It's better. We had that yesterday. R2D2. Yeah, we had daylight savings today, so it's like super early here in Australia. That's good. Saturday, if there's one person's take on this fiasco I want to hear, it's Julian's. Oh, oh. It's a spicy day. Dharma, how you going? New art promo. Hope people don't riot over them in Amsterdam. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Sagana Sensei, good to see you. Otto. See, look, Otto. Otto's here. O double T O. I don't think we've spoken in a live chat for about nine months. Kevin, how you doing? Scrumpy, Turk, Dark Ray. Good evening. Another real one. Cat D, what's good? Joshua, Marshu, Hector, Beanie. We got a lot of people in here. I've scrolled. I've scrolled forward. <laughs> say hello again. I'll say hello back. I swear. I promise. Bailey Craig, these cups be spreading the germs. I swear. You gotta keep your. You gotta get your eight hours when you're doing the cup grind. Pokemon TCG cup grind. You gotta make sure your sleep's all good. You're eating right because yes, you are getting exposed to like sixty different people. Two different days on a weekend. Your body's going to be battling some bugs. Java Scar, what's good? Sharp Shadows. Hello from London. Good to see you, Sharp Shadows. Emmett, what's good, Emmett? Adrian, what's good? So sorry to jump the gun, but I heard the Pika promo given out in Amsterdam is a non holo. And the ones from the Pokemon Center holo. Can you confirm? Did you read that on Poker Beach? Poker Beach is a very. Oh, hang on. Wait, that's slander. <laughs> um, I. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, there was one news outlet that reported that and, uh, they, well, I, <laughs> they didn't even report it. They speculated on a typo. So, <laughs> uh, there's only one type of promo wherever you read that, which was likely poker beach, but it may have been somewhere else. Um, I would take their, <laughs> I'm gonna get sued. Fuck it. Um, I would take that with a grain of salt. They're just really, they just, they're speculative. It was a speculative article. And they have a history of doing that. Yeah, I semi-ratioed them. It was funny. That did not help anything, just quietly. That made this whole Van Gogh promo thing that extra little bit worse that it didn't need to be. Lazy journalism. I mean, you want to hear the real story? All right, here's, here's what actually happened. Okay, so let's jump into the stream. Let's just start. Cool. Hello, everybody. If I didn't say hello personally to you, nothing personal, kid. 
But thank you for coming down to say hello. You can just talk, just talk to me during the chat. I always talk in the chat. This is what I do. This is what we're doing today. We're talking about the Van Gogh Pikachu promo. So if you didn't see this last week shenanigans, uh, Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam collaborated with a Pokemon company and we got some cool stuff out of it. We also got some really grimy events out of it. It was ridiculous. Can you pronounce Van Go in the thickest? Sh shut up, probably. Okay, so basically, this is what happened with that whole non follow, non non follow, non hollow foil. Let's just say non hollow and then foil. Let's just say non hollow and hollow <laughs> version of the promo. So there was a speculative article published. Okay, let's just start from the start. So basically, what happened was uh, a couple, no follow. <laughs> shut up, man. What happened was. A few influencers got invited to the, the to the museum itself before the whole thing kicked off. Uh, two of those were Joe Merritt and Ross from PTCG Radio. So they actually got invited down to go to the event. They were the first people there. So all the information that we got about the museum about was actually in the museum and what was going to be distributed, what you could buy, all the merchandise and everything came from those two. A lot of it came from those two. So they were the source because they were there. They were speaking to the representatives. They were speaking to the people at the museum. So they knew what was happening. That was the best bit of information that we had. That was the most thorough um, coverage of the event that we had. And Poker Guardian reported on it, gave us all that firsthand info. There was a lot of people talking about and, and, and sharing the tweets that Ross was putting up. That Cere oh, So Joe Merritt's the um, webmaster of Cerebi.net, if you guys don't know. So you know the website Cerebi? That's Joe Merritt, right? Uh, they reported on it. So every other outlet that didn't get to go there had to use their reporting for their article. So what you normally do is you report on it. So let's say you got a website, different Pokemon, a different Pokemon um, news reporting website. Maybe it's along the coast. There's some sand, there's some water, right? If you're one of those websites, you have to rely on that information to write your article, which is fine. That's how news works. You cite the source. That's how news works, right? Um, but maybe some other websites that are along the coast and have sand and some waves and there's the nice weather. Just wanted to put that little spin on it because the product listing on the Pokemon Center website mentioned a holographic version of the promo. But the actual source itself from a representative at the museum said, no, there's only one. The same non-holographic version is going to be distributed all around the world, including at the Pokemon Center. That irresponsible reporting amplified the uh, the interest in the online version of the promo. And it just created all this speculation. You know what it's like. You know, you just get like, whoa, now there's two. It's going to get even harder to collect. Wow, I need to get both now. This is going to be crazy. It was just a bit silly. So that's what happened. Otto, thank you for 20 months. Absolute G. I think Otto's been a member since before there was even streaming here over at Twitch. So, uh, over at YouTube. Thank you for 20 months of support, my guy. They usually don't get invited to anything. No, I don't see them getting invited to events. It's actually quite funny. I only get my news from O. Plus. <laughs> Very angry source. <laughs> it is a little bit of misinformation, yeah. So, Van Gogh promo. How'd you guys go? Tell me about it. Who actually copped? Because this was a, this was a this was ridiculous, and I know I don't you don't need me to tell you that it was ridiculous. But this is this is gonna be one of the biggest fumbles of 2023, bar none. I gotta close my door real quick. Jarzad got nothing. Rip. Sorry, dude. Sorry, Jar. That's just it's frustrating, eh? Asteria got a few. Devon. He got. Darkray. No money, so didn't cop. Rip. Kygus. I copped six playmats for me and the homies. Am I one of the homies? Let's go, baby. <laughs> I only get my news from J-Love based. I want, I want to go to the Netherlands, but I don't want to if it's just chaos. I... I'm assuming it's going to have, I'm, I'm assuming it's cooled down at the actual museum by now, surely. I know Primal Lugia, and I don't know if he's still in the chat. I know Primal Lugia was recently at the event. Well, actually, you may have been at the event yourself as well. If you were there, like in the last couple of days, let us know. What was it like? Was it as crazy as that video show, the one that everyone was sharing? Turk, I slept through the drop. 
rare. You must have been in a different time zone, surely. Jesse, I copped the promo at the museum. Dub. I copped the postal box, a journal, and a puzzle. I got a play amount of plush and four packs of sleeves. Mud Kips, good to see you. Loving the UK friendly stream. That's why I did it. I think a lot of people say that they got it. A lot of people say that they didn't. Which is expected. People kept asking me for a code and the website kept asking me patterns. I never get... I mean, so where I'm at is I don't know if my order is confirmed. Because I didn't get a confirmation email. So a lot of people are saying that if you don't get a confirmation e email, it's absolutely ogre for you. But the website says that my order has been received. So I don't know what that means. I don't usually buy from Pokemon Center America. So I don't know where I'm at. I think, I'm, I think it's ogre for me. Jesse, Jesse said, from my experience, the museum was calm. That's good. You don't, you don't want to, you don't want to go to those events and then they're just like, they feel bad. I know like the Pokemon centers at ICs and I know at Worlds, the last, the last day was like, just a bad feeling. It's just like people everywhere just hoarding. Yeah, they charged my card too. But people said that they can just, they just reverse it. It just like drops off your card. I think that means they don't have the items to fill your order, but they have promos. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> um, somebody said, what's with the misinformation? Uh, Poker Beach misreported or just posted a speculative article. But the thing is, a lot of people take speculation and articles, speculative articles as news itself, which is really dangerous. News should just be facts. And the, the story there was that there is a conflicting report whether there's a hollow version or a non and a, and a non hollow version based on a, a, a product description on the pokemon center but they just reported like oh it's probably a hollow and then everyone was like oh my god there's two versions of it there was only one um so that's an l for the poker beach four sleeves two play mats four figures two deck box very lucky trailblazer are you a scalper <laughs> i'm joking this is i, I want to talk about this today i want to talk about where you draw the line I'm not calling you out, <laughs> Trailblazer. But let's put a let's just highlight that message. We'll, we'll let's 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 circle back to that later. <laughs> I mean, I bought two Pikachu sleeves. That's all I managed to get in my in the in the haste. Am I a scalper? I can only sleeve one deck at a time. Michael Krinsky, he's dead. You can't say, you can't say screw Van Gogh. He's dead. That's so bad. He can't, you know what's the worst thing about that? He can't retort. He's dead, dude. You can't kick a man when he's down. You're crazy for that. It's crazy that if it's in that cart, we can calmly pay for it. It sells out before we can pay at the end. So I kept getting an error all throughout the process. I got a signed one. Let's go, man. He's dead. You're lying. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have a signed one. He died. Now, I gotta, I gotta admit, those eBay listings were funny. They were hilarious. They were actually very, very funny. Then go home. All right, let's talk about how. Okay, so what made this so bad? And I'm, I'm actually just gonna pull up the tweet, right? Um, if I click this button, am I going to hell? I just got a bad feeling if I click this one. Where are we going? Where's this going to take us? Yep, I had a feeling it was going to take us there. That's fine. Let's see if we can fix this. I'm Derp Dino, but I'm just using an alt account. One of the chats are here. I am. Hello. Well, could you use Truffle TV? I will try to set that up. I'll do my best. I will set that up.
They should have let people buy promos. Problem solved. Do you guys actually think that would have fixed it if they let you buy the promo? Do you think that would have actually fixed it? If it's just like, pick up the promo, it's $10. Hey, Shablin, what's good? And a lot of nopes. A lot of people saying no. Why no? But why? But why? But why? What day is it today? It is the twenty. It's the first of October. It's the thirtieth of September, right? So which account? Which account was talking about the Van Gogh promo? And which account? Which account put the apology out? Here we go. Here we go. The apology came from... It also came from Pokemon. What I want to know... What I want to see is... I want to see where it said that we're going to do our best. They said they're going to they're gonna properly articulate to you guys when the promo is going to come. Like when, when all the... Um, when all the merch is going to drop. So this is the tweet that announced it. Explore the art of Vincent Van Gogh with Pokemon at the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. It's got Pokemon themed artworks, take part in art hunt and shop exclusive merchandise from Pokemon Center at the museum from, from 28th of September through 7th of January. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. 7th of January, they actually thought? Did they really think it was gonna last till the 7th of January? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> where did it? Okay, Mix. Great. That's what I want. That's what I'm trying to find. Mix. Where did it say? Look to our socials for information. Where did it say that? Did that? Did they say that on an Instagram story? What's up, Manny Live? Good to see you. Reprint October apparently. That's pretty good. Is that for the the merch or just the promo though? Because I don't think. Well, a lot of people just then. I just asked a question to you guys, and you all said. No, if I, if I said if they just sold the promo, would that have fixed it? If somebody's, um, can somebody send me a screenshot of that in Discord? And I will just open it up that way. My theory is the limited supply for the internet to make more interested in museum visits. But Amsterdam, I guess you can get to Amsterdam pretty easily if you're in Europe. Because a bit, a lot of the, a lot of the frustration around this came from that little snippet of information. There was a part, there was somewhere, somewhere it said, you guys are saying on the F FAQ, somewhere it said, we're going to let you guys know on social media when this drops and you're going to like, we'll, we'll tell you more when it actually drops properly on the Pokemon Center. I would go if I was in Europe. <laughs> but I am not. All right, you, we're gonna have to go, trust me, bro. If I get fact checked on this, I will just put a little asterisk. I'm very certain. But even if this wasn't the case, it still doesn't matter because the way that it was distributed was a huge issue as a, re as a big reason why a lot of people were pissed off. From what I from what I remember, okay, at some point, Cabe, welcome to Senpai, you absolute legend. Thank you for becoming a member. You're a real one. From what I remember, at some point, they said we will let you know more on social media, okay? They're gonna tell you more about when it's gonna drop. But the way that this dropped was insane. So was it last night? It was yesterday. No, it was it was about like 36 hours ago. Um and I, the way I found out was I got a DM from a Discord server that was like, hey, the merch is dropping on the US website. Go. You go on the website. There's nothing there. It's like, where am I going? You're, you're clicking around trying to find where the merch, like where the things are. Nothing's popping up. Search wasn't working. Everything was super slow because people were like rushing the website. 
it was difficult to actually find what you wanted i don't think you could search it it just wasn't working i was getting linked to the content to the to the to the merchant's eyes with individual links i don't know how those people the people that were sending me the links i don't know how they found the links but i was getting them you click the links then you're going straight to the product on the page it was just the scripts finding it so does that mean the person sending me the links in the server was a script <laughs> they're not real are they is that just chat gpt so june is a bot okay so june is a bot confirmed So it didn't actually drop properly, which is insane. Do you, you know how insane that is? You can't do that. You can't do that. That's so dumb. I'm not even mad, right? I'm not even mad. I just want to, I want to make this super clear. I'm not mad about any of this. It's just so stupid. And that's why I want to talk about how dumb this is. Because you could buy it. No, this actually starts, this goes back a little bit further. Because the plush, do you remember the plush? The plush was the first thing that went online. I think it was like the entire day before, wasn't it? The plush sold out the day before everything was supposed to go up. And it, the plush never officially dropped on the website. It just like from a link that you could navigate to or you could search to if you went on PokemonCenter.com. You couldn't actually navigate to it. You had to be given the link. So before this thing even started, the plush had sold out, which is the plush is one of the cooler things, right? So that wasn't, that was just dumb, flat out stupid. This is why the apology is so bad. This is why this apology is actually just horrible. It's so stupid. Can we, did my OBS just break? No, we're good. Okay. Uh, if you go to discord.gg slash okjlove, you can actually join our discord server. And you can um, just post it in base chat and I'll click it, I'll open it there. So this apology is so stupid because, okay, we apologize to all the fans eagerly waiting on Pokemon Center X Van Gogh Museum release today. Fine. Okay. Okay. You're okay. You're okay for now. Whoop, that's the wrong button. Due to overwhelming demand, all our products from this collection have sold out. No. Okay. No, that's not what happened. You're lying. I mean, yeah, there is overwhelming demand, but that is not what happened. Why are you so mean to the TPCI social media handler? Hang on a second. Why is it? No, okay. Why is it that when you criticize someone or you tell them that they're stupid, it's being mean? Like if you, t if you tell somebody, what's the difference between this? You're dumb or you're not very good at your job or you didn't you didn't handle that very well what's the difference between those three and they all mean the same thing they actually all mean the same thing don't they they all mean the same thing in fact it's better to just say the first one because it very clearly expresses what you mean the other two are just like nice ways of saying a bad thing yes if you if you tell if you tell them they're bad at doing their job it's the same they're bad at it because they're dumb. So the reason why this was so stupid is because, yeah, there was overwhelming demand, but somebody at some point listed the plushie, at some point listed the plushie a day before it was supposed to go up, which is super dumb. Okay, so that was dumb. That Can we just all agree? Can we just all agree that that was dumb? Yes, that wasn't a mistake. That was just dumb. I mean, it was a, it was a dumb mistake. It's both. We can all agree. Yes. The plushie went up an hour early, not a day early. Still dumb. <laughs> I hate it when I have to run things back. Let me cook. Pokemon Center took down the link. Interesting. They took, what do you mean they took down the link? Ah, so Pokemon Drops tweeted it, but you can't actually see that link anymore. It doesn't, it goes to Zendesk. Classic.
it links me to the trainer clutch trying to tr trying to get my player id so this is pokemon drops is a decent account so let's we're gonna run with them as the source on this one i don't see why pokemon drops has never lied for no reason so i've never seen i've never seen pokemon tcg drops just flat out lie to get engagement so we're gonna run with this uh the pokemon center x van Gogh museum merchandise for pokemon center in the us canada and the uk is coming please stay tuned to our social ch social channels for additional details so those additional details never came the plush kaigas thank you dropped an hour early which was silly and we never nobody got any notification about it so the plush sold out before this thing even started i'm certain it didn't i you're capping because in my timeline i came home nah it didn't it was not an hour it was way earlier anyway so what's the time what's 1 30 a.m in australia time if it was america <laughs> wow that's a really bad way of asking that question 1 30 a.m australia in america <laughs> thanks google so at about 11 30 a.m no it was actually one yeah it was about 11 30 a.m Okay, 11.30 a.m. on the 29th of September or the 28th of September. What day is it? You guys in your time zone, I swear. It was the 28th, right? So this stuff drops at like about 11.30 a.m. Eastern, right? But again, none of the none of the products can be navigated to on the website. So I'm getting these links on Discord. People are sending me like, here's the sleeves. Here's the playmat. Here's the tote bag. That was the only way that I was finding anything. Some people were able to buy stuff with specific links. That's the thing, way. The items went uploaded onto the site fully as you couldn't search for them. That was how it was. That was exact. That's how it was for like the most of the drop. Did it ever, ever at any point, did any of the items for sale at any point become accessible on the website via like normal navigation? Like you go to Pokemon Center and you search um, Van Gogh sleeves and then they come up. Did that happen at any point? Because... I went to bed like an hour or two after the drop and about 30 minutes after everything dropped it, mostly everything was sold out so I just was like it's already over a couple of the figures showed up on the new release page but that's it I'm never able to buy anything when it drops. You and me both, Shabalan. You and me both. Mr. Fischl Sticks, thank you for the sub. Welcome to the, welcome to the channel. For me it did, but it was weird to get to. So I I never saw it. I was, I just went to bed. About an hour after everything let's just say appeared, because that's what it, it just appeared, right? After everything just like appeared, um, I just went to sleep. I got into what happened. I got linked the sleeves. I was playing Counter Strike. This is so stupid. I was playing Counter Strike too, right? And I just went AFK trying to buy stuff. I managed to add the sleeve. Who's the mod that keeps deleting innocent messages? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what messages are getting deleted either. I was able to get in. I added two of the Pikachu sleeves to my cart. Somehow I got the checkout. PokemonCenter.com never lets me check out. It always has a problem with my PayPal or my bank card. But for some reason it worked and I got through. I never got a confirmation email. After that, it was over. So, oh, that was the other thing. It was like spend another $4.95 and get free shipping. I was panicking. I was literally sweating. I, I tried to add like the Eevee sleeves to my cart. Then I tried to add the, the mat and I was like, nah, we have to, we just have to push through. If I, if I spend any more time here, I'm just going to lose. Um, so I paid shipping rip actually, actually rip. That's not a stonks move. That was, I'm, I'm going to lose money there. Disappointing, but it happens. It happens. Uh, but like I said, I never got the confirmation email. You have to check out. It was sometimes still too slow. It is in my audio history. It just, just says received. Are you going to buy anything on the secondary market? We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Because I did see the video that Twice Back Jake put up yesterday, and I thought that was a bit odd. I was just like, eh. Like, I get it, but also, mm, um, weird take. I had two mugs in my cart, and they would not let me remove one. Like, what? <laughs> you should have just bought the mugs. You should just push through. At that point, there's no point trying to play around with your cart. 
It was over. You just, have to, you just have to get in there. You can easily play a guessing game with the link. Well, just try to change product ending in 8.5 to ending in 8.6. That's crazy. It's actually crazy that you could do that. It's very smart though. Like it's, it's, it's very cheeky that you can like guess the product link and then get there. So what happened on the what happened on the um the British version? Because the thing one thing that almost tripped me up is that I was looking at links to the products and I kept getting the links um mixed up between the the UK website and then the US website. And I was trying I think I was trying to log in and check out my cart from the British from the UK website, not realizing it was the UK Pokemon Center. Pulling my hair out, wondering why I couldn't log in and why my cart was empty. The British version didn't drop at the same time. It definitely dropped very close to. I heard people use links from the USA to find the UK links before their drop happened to. Inza, that is crazy. It's so crazy. I'm so angry. I'm just going to invest in my own bot with 10,000 pounds and scalp everything before the scalpers and sell it at MSRP to the people who can never beat the bots. Time to be the Robin Hood of Pokemon. <laughs> All right, let him cook. I'm letting Tien cook. <laughs> it was the same SKU, so they just reverse engineered the USA links to get the UK. It's so bad. So this is why this, I think this apology is just terrible. We understand this is disappointing to many who are looking to our official email and social media channels for guidance on how and when to purchase. We are actively working on ways to provide more Pikachu with gray felt hat promo cards for fans shopping at Pokemon Center in the future. Details will be released at a later date. So I know some people in the chat said that um, there's going to be a restock mid-October. But is that going to be for the merchandise or just the promo? Have I been crying? Yeah, I've been bawling my eyes out. I'm so angry. I'm so mad. I'm so, I'm really pissed off. The restock in October was for the museum. That's pretty cool though. Who are these sources that say there are many pallets of cards left? Who are the sources? G give me your source, damn it. Only museum can buy the items. Restock just the museum. It's probably better that way, but that's going to make this even worse. Um, so... What I don't understand is how I just don't get. And I know that I know that we're just like angrily yelling at the clouds, but one of the most infuriating things, or just like mind-boggling. Tian, thank you for the sub. Welcome to the channel. One of the just most mind-boggling things about this whole saga is how. Like, how was there not just a button that was like, okay, add items to the website? You know what I mean? Like you pre, they, they, they generate the product listing. They do all the, whatever you're doing. Like does someone in chat work in web dev? Surely, surely someone in chat works in web dev, right? You, you make the website, you, you make the website, you make the product listing, the web page, right? And then you just schedule it. That's what I'm saying. Like, how is there not? And then it's like, okay, press the button. It's up and wait, hang on. Press the button, it's up. And then at the very same time, send the email. The email was sent to everybody. And now they've got an email. Hey, you can buy it now. Send the tweet. Hey, you can buy it now. Instagram story. Hey, you can buy it now. That's what I, I mean. I do it. I just do that manually when I click go live. And it works. It gets the job done. It's better than me just stealth doing it. Pokefang, welcome to Senpai. Thank you very much. You're legend. And Inza, thank you for becoming a member. Welcome to Senpai. You're legend. Thank you very much. It's just all, it's automated. It's chat GBT. I'm an AI. I'm Quibble Quop. This is what happens when you trust unpaid interns to do web dev. It's insane. Like it's actually, can we just all, like this is just meant to be like a breathing room. It's honestly insane because they're making more money than ever. We can all, we can, I mean, we don't need to see the books. We don't need to see accounts, but we know they're making more money than ever. They're making more money than ever. 
how can you make how can you be making so much money more money than ever and still fail at the simple things that's what pisses me off and then when you say they're stupid you're mean and toxic you're mean and toxic for being dumb you're bad at what you do and it made a lot of people frustrated there's a deeper conversation here it's just like let it go why are you getting so upset about consuming we don't actually need we don't need this stuff do we we don't need to get the stuff do we but life is miserable isn't it we can all agree there and so sometimes when you buy stuff it just makes you feel better so you're just hanging on for these little wins and they keep I run an e-com site for a D2C brand. There's no excuse for the types of errors that make on Pokemon. There is no excuse. That's not meant to be a threat. Literally, it's horrific. There's a reason they hide their CX team. It's, I did that because I'm just like, man, I'm so strong. I'm powering up. Ugh, Super Saiyan 3. Become an epic minimalist. I can't. It's too late. It'd be fraudulent. I've been asking the same thing about Game Freak developing the games. It's because minimum effort equals massive profits. <sighs> Hang on. That's a touchy subject. Don't start talking about the games. We'll be here all day. It's insane. People looked at order numbers that were 10 minutes apart and it was a difference of 130k. Whoa. Are we? Oh my God. So they underestimate the man and they're not doing to meet it. Stop buying stupid crap. I can't help it, man. Okay. So... The way that it was distributed, the fact that it just wasn't publicly announced, hey, it's live now, that it stealthily went up to the website, that bots, scripts, and people that were just manually clicking on links were able to get through before it was officially released and buy everything before it was officially announced that it was up is insane and a massive blunder and just inexcusable for a company in 2023 of Pokemon Science. That part is bad. Here's the other stupid bit. Why were any of these items... They knew. Okay, so they knew that this was going to be in demand. Like, let's be serious. It was pretty obvious that this was going to be in demand. Okay? They knew that. Why were half of these items, or most of these items, more than one per person? That was insane. Who needs... Like, who needs more than one tote bag? You don't. You actually don't. If you know that there's a lot of people that want stuff, putting purchase limits is an excellent way to curb this. Because... It's going to slow everybody down. It's going to make it harder. Yeah, you can probably still get around it by making multiple accounts, checking out multiple times, whatever. Like bots are able to do what they do, right? I'm not going to get into it, right? But you make it one per person and you make it harder. You slow it down. It's another, it's another mechanism. It's just a, it's a, it's an, it's a, it's a strategy to just, cooling this whole thing down sleeves okay two limit i mean i i still think sleeves should have just been a one limit it should have just been a one per person limit because you go from one to two you half it quick math you 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 if you make it two per person it sells out twice as quick you make it one it sells out one half as quick had to get two to meet free shipping though. Just pay for shipping. I was really bummed to find out that the Van Gogh products were like sold out within an hour. I was planning to buy two items for my mom's birthday and myself, but they were released while I was at... Where, Frank? Frank Ramirez. They were released while you were at... Where? Where were you, Frank? On the 28th of September at 11.30 a.m. Eastern. Where were you? I hope those sculptors just have to live with 25 tote bags in their closet. Someone made a very funny comment before and said, <laughs> what'd they say? Do you know how many tote bags women buy? That, come on, man, you can't say that. You're a bloody idiot. You can't, why, what? Only women buy tote bags? Get out of here, persuasive. I was at school, damn it. It's always school, always at school, eh? Gets you every time. Plush was five limit. Day one. Trailblazer. That's insane. Man, somebody should have... Somebody should have record... Like, I really hope somebody screenshot the product listings, like, before and after. I don't think we could get to it. I don't think we would be able to see it with, like, Wayback Machine or anything. 
like five plush per person. Why do you need five plush? It's insane. You don't like we don't need anything. Everyone's got their 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 personal reason, but I think the way that um the way that collectibles and like merchandise, the direction that it's been moving the last five, ten years, I think a natural way to just like stem the flow is to just limit it. Because everybody's got their personal reason. Like, I need no five okay, so it's like the case for five plushes per person. Like, I need five because I need to get one for Timmy, Jimmy, and Kimmy. But do you need to? No, you want to. So we're in this age now where merchandise is really it's just limited. Like they can only they can only manufacture so much. Ethically, we should only manufacture so much. We shouldn't just like unlimitedly unless on the word. We just should we shouldn't limitlessly manufacture things so we can sell them. That's just like unethical. That's destructive to the environment. We're gonna get we're gonna get we're getting deep here, right? But it's part of living is enjoying the simple things, like the simple pleasures in life. Like buying something that you put on your shelf and looks cool and makes you feel nice. That's fine. I get it. But you don't need to have like three of them. You can just get one. And it would just slow everything down. Because at first it would be frustrating where it's like, damn it, I need to get a lot of stuff and they're not letting me. But over time, like people would just, it would normalize like everything in life. It would just normalize. Like, oh, you can only get one. We're limiting, the stores are limiting things, right? The other approach is like what Brandon Ewan said, which is made to order pre-orders, right? But even that has, that has to be capped at some point too. You can do made to order as long as it's one per person. And that works. That's been proven to work, especially the Japanese Pokemon Center. That's working over there. Now I'm not going to get into, I'm not going to do the whole like Japanese culture versus Western culture thing. Like Japan is so based and they're better than the rest of the world compared to everyone else because that's Japan glorify it. Also, I'm not dissing Japan when I say that, but Japan have got it right there. And I think their culture generally is the right approach to like it has, has a pretty decent approach to consumerism because it's just about getting things in moderation rather than just swamping yourself in stuff. So the plushes should have just been one per person and that would have solved the plush problem. Counter argument, I don't need to listen to you in your lies. You don't need to listen to me. Would you have been upset if the sleeves, the mat, the tote bag, everything was one per person? In the chat right now, would you have been upset if it was one per person? Like, would you have, would you have gone, that's it. I hate Pokemon. I'm never playing Pokemon, collecting Pokemon, looking at Pokemon ever again. I've had enough. That's the last straw. Waiting for someone to say yes. There it is, Ant. That guy's a rattle rider, so he's trolling. It's just resounding no. No one would actually. Oh, and Kygus, but he's trolling. If I get one of each, I'd be a happy boy. So there, so there you go. That's it. It's like you just did now. Okay, now if you could only get one promo, would you would you be mad? If you could only get one promo, would you would you be upset? Like, would you be like a little bit disappointed that you could only get one run promo? Cause I'm gonna, okay. Like, really? Like, I feel like there should be a, I feel like that I'm, I'm feeling like there should be more people that would be up slightly disappointed that they could only get one. Like it's okay. I'm not judging you. I'm not judging anybody here. You can, I just want to know. I don't sell my collection, so I only need one. Thing is, as much as people would genuinely want this merch, they knew they'd sell so much more if they had promo skull behind. It's better for publicity to have this hit media and just reprint it. I think it's pretty bad though. No, like that's a you get the tin foil. You got the tin foil hat on, Mountie. <laughs> You're cooking, man. He's cooking. Nah, nah, I disagree. Because I think the backlash has been pretty bad. I don't think they want any of this bad press. It's mixed. It's it's understandably mixed. But the the crux of it is that yeah, you might be a little bit disappointed. I saw just just Jack say I'd be a little bit disappointed. 
right? But then Pokefang said, I only need one. Like, yeah, you only need one. I only need one too. I think one item per person, two promos was probably the way to go. Because then you can do cute stuff. You can gift one to a friend or like you can, you can get one graded and you can put one in your binder. I think it's just flexible and it's easier. It's, there's less of an ethical um, issue for printing a lot of the cards than there is of just the merchandise. Although the plastic, the plastic, mm, the plastic, I don't know, man. So one per person fixes this whole thing. So the fact that there wasn't one per person and they knew how much demand there was going to be, somebody at some point, like, just hire me. Like, honestly, just hire me. I'll do it for you. Hire me. I know, yeah, I know, you, the guy that's doing it now, they're dumb, fire them, lose their job, some other job. Me, the new hotness. Bring me in. I will sort this out. I know how this works. Do you know how many drop? I've been buying stuff online since, goddamn 2001. Like, I've seen it. I've seen it all. I got you. Tag me in. Put me in, coach. I'm in, right? All we need is an Aussie to say no to make us feel better. I don't say no like that. I've never, and I don't, and I'm never going to. I don't naturally say no like that. That's just a, that's just a, a office thing. Like if you work in the city, you say that stuff. I don't work in the city. No, don't hire Kai, guess hire me. I would fix this. Like we, like a lot of people here would just fix this instantly. Made the order fixes this too. But yeah, the fact that they went, um, they purchased limits off. And then after, the, when they then, then, they're so reactive. That's the problem, right? They're so reactive. Like they're not proactive, right? That's crazy. They're just like, oh, sh it's going bad, Jimmy. Quick, make it two per person instead of five. That'll fix it. Come on, bro. I think made to order is a solution. Oh, there's always someone and it's always, why is it always a boomer that says this? Made to order is not a solution. Oh my God. Why do you guys say this? Made to order works. It's so based. How can you say made to order is not a solution? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Like, how does it not work? Mason, my God, of course you're saying that. You run a store. You're going to say it doesn't work. How, how is made to order not a solution? <laughs> what do you mean? It's no, no, sane, rational people understand that made to order works. You, you know how good it is? And the, you know what? The, this, this is the best thing about made to order, right? You forget that you bought it. And then when you get it, it's an awesome surprise. So not only do you get the thing, right? Not only do you pay the absolute lowest price possible retail, you get it and it's like an extra surprise. It's like you're getting it twice. When, when you buy it, you feel good. When you get it, you feel good again. It's You get it two times. Like... I don't have my um my Pokemon 151 booster box. I don't have it, the Japanese one, right? I don't have it yet. But I know it's coming. And that's it. That's good enough for me. I'm fine with that. Clay Burst, like it took me Clay Burst, that box there. I just got it. And it was easy. I don't get it. If everyone gets it at the same time, what is the issue? It's so crazy how people say made to order doesn't work. It is so crazy. You're absolutely crazy. TBCI is a big corporation. Have fun. Your superior and superior superiors will slam you down when you raise concerns. Things have to go bad before it gets fixed. Reflection is good in life. I guess as long as you're making money, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, companies are less likely to change things as long as their bottom line is staying or is is either staying where it needs to be or rising. They're not gonna change anything. Cause the fact is, if they did this, if they did this next week with like another um, another artist, right? Another collaboration like this, two weeks from here, just drops. No one, it, absolutely nobody is gonna stay, stay out of it on a moral reason. From a moral standpoint say, you know what? The, Van, the way they handled Van Gogh was disgusting. I am never giving them my money again. Nobody is going to sit, sit it out. Absolutely nobody. But made to order doesn't happen at the same time because it's a restock that... Mason, I'm going to end this. You're stupid and wrong. Okay, we're moving on. 
I am disgusted by the people at the Van Gogh. Whoa, hang on a second. I, I reckon don't go off at the people at the Van Gogh Museum. They're just, they were not, I made a little bit of a joke about them in my um, YouTube short and I felt bad about it because they just are going to the museum to like do what, what they think is like a normal day work at the museum. And then they're gonna deal with all this craziness. They're not equipped to handle that. So I can't, I cannot fault the museum workers there at all. Damn, hold that L. Yeah, 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 Mason. I'm totally holding the L right now. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm on the L. Um, I don't even know it dropped. They should, they should have done a delivery Charizard. They should have done that. That worked. That was, that was literally made to order. That was practically as close as it gets. The, the email drop was the best way to do it. Not the people working there, but the sculptors that went there and just planned everything. Yeah, those guys sucked. Um, so I saw people, people were asking before, how do you feel about buying this stuff off of eBay from sculptors? Okay, so, um, not going in on Jake, but really cool taking his last video. And I would talk to, I would, if Jake wanted to come on, I probably should invite him on at some point. I've been thinking about doing this. So I reckon at some point I'm gonna get Jake onto a live stream, if he'd like to come on. I'm not gonna do what I did to Mason and call Jake stupid. Jake's not stupid, Mason's not. Um, but Jake had a pretty, I think he had a contradictory take in his last video about this. So this is going to get a little bit, I'm going to, I'm going to, this is going to be chatting, right? But just let me call. All right. Let me call. Okay. So I can't invite you because I would just, Mason, it's like, what? Dude, Mason, nobody wants to watch me verbally destroy you for two hours or maybe they do um <laughs> people are saying jake was farming views even if they are bad ones taking advantage of the moment no i don't think so i just think he had a pretty poor like he had a contradictory take on the whole thing so before we actually even saw any of the stuff um that was going to drop the merchandise the promo card anything we just knew that there was going to be a van gogh museum x pokemon collaboration Jake put a video up and was like, just talking about it, as you do, just like, hey, we saw this, blah, 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 reporting on it. And then he was like, I'd like to get 40 to 50 of the card, not to sell, but to give to people. That come, like, that's that's my whole, like, they should just make it one per person. Like, if those people want it, the other 40, 50 people, or the 49 people that want the card, they can just go get it themselves. Nobody needs to do that. Like, I guess it's like a cute gift. It's like a, it's like an, it's a cute gift. Like, it's like a nice thing to be able to do, but, it's it's why we have so many problems with this stuff because we just like have this consumerism mentality of like oh no i can get 40 to 50 then i will get 40 to 50 you know what i mean if you can get 10 you will try to get 10 if you're on that sigma grind say you're trying to make as much money as you can or you're trying to like give them to friends like if you can do it then you'll do it if they allow you so they sh the system shouldn't allow us to do that because then the person that just wants to get one or can only afford one, maybe they want to give 50 to friends too, but they can't actually afford it, right? Is then not able to, and then you're just getting less people satisfied. So I thought that was like a pretty weird, a weird angle from Jake. I didn't like, I didn't, I just thought that was like dumb, right? I just thought it was a silly. Um, because Jake knows better. I think Jake knows better that like this stuff is like super in demand. And so if you have 10 people that want to get 50, that's, 10 people consuming 500 of a limited item. It doesn't work, right? Nobody, ha nobody has 50 high <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, in his last video, he said, don't buy from scalpers. Okay. So he, he said, don't buy it off the secondary market. Now, I'm like, I'm with that. I am with that. But if you want to buy it off eBay, I don't think it's a bad thing. I know that, that might sound odd. I don't, I, cause I know that if you buy it off eBay, you're technically supporting scalpers. I don't think it's a bad thing. Like, I don't think you should be ashamed, right? If you buy it from a scalper or that there's like some ethical, the, like you're, you're breaking some ethical issue there. Like you're, like that it's basically unethical if you're buying it from a scalper. I don't, I don't think so, right? Because what, what's the difference between when a card goes up in value 
and a piece of merchandise goes up in value. Fundamentally, there is no difference. The only saucy or like conflicting, contentious issue with this merchandise here is that the time span that it went up is too rapid. And so it's like not natural. It's not a natural appreciation of the good going up in value. So it becomes unethical. And if you're... Great point. I, as an Australian, I haven't even like mentioned this once. So we didn't even get a chance. As an Aussie, if you're from Australia, New Zealand, um, I don't know what it's like in South America. If you're from Asia, you never stood a chance. Like you just were not able to buy this stuff without going through a, uh, a parcel forwarder. Because we're taking it for what? If you can afford to do so, then buy whatever you want. But I understand the argument because the same thing can be applied to the whole sneaker market. Well, same for the rest of Europe. Can't, couldn't Europe buy it from the UK Pokemon Center? That's crazy. The thing, the, the, like, the thing that irked me with Jake's last video talking about saying like, don't buy it from the secondary market, don't buy it from scalpers, is that a lot of, uh, a lot, a lot of Japanese booster boxes sold in America are sold on eBay. And they're almost always, I mean, they're always sold on the secondary market. So when you're making videos talking about buying Japanese Pokemon cards and like investing in Japanese booster boxes because they're getting cheaper, you are buying them from resellers. Like you are buying them from resellers at that point. And you're buying them like they're, what's the difference between a reseller and a scalper? What's the difference? They're the same thing. So I don't understand why it's like, I draw a line on the Van Gogh stuff, but I don't draw a line on the anything else that's on the secondary market or is a collectible that's gone up in value. So if you're not drawing a line on one, then you can just easily cross the other line and it doesn't matter. It's different sides of the same card. Like at, at that point, it doesn't matter. If you're already buying stuff off the secondary market, what's the difference? What's the difference with buying the Van Gogh stuff of the secondary market. Scalpers wouldn't be doing it if no one bought from scalpers. But they're always going to buy from scalpers they're, because they're buying from scalpers in other ways. They just don't know it. Maybe it's because this one's so obvious that it feels bad. But a lot of the time... I love how... I love how it's... <laughs> Yeah, you know what? He's right. We should support the scalper. I'm saying if you want to buy it, I don't care. And I don't think you should be judged. And I don't think you should worry about what other people think. Holy poker fish. Holy poker fish. A scalper is a malleable concept that always seems to result in it being everyone but themselves. So, you were so crazy for that. Poker fish just hit the nail on the head. It's so true. It's so true. At like, if I buy, let's say I bought um, this mug, right? So this is the the Yokohama World mug, right? But then I'm like, I don't want it anymore. And and I look on eBay last sold, and it's selling for a hundred dollars. And I bought it for thirty. Am I a scalper? I should be a scalper. At that point, I am a scalper. Like, I am a scalper at that point. On the same logic, I have to be. I just have to be. Because if we follow that logic, I'm scalping, right? Or no, it's only if you do two. Or it's only when you do five. Or it's only if you did 10. Like at one, at what? But, but scalpers 10 times. So like, this is what I mean. It, but that's why poker fish was cooking so hard because it's malleable. At what point do we say, oh, it's, it's scalping now because you sold X more. You're not a scalper unless you realize a quick profit. Mm -hmm. Scalping depends on intent. Are you buying up the whole market with a bot farm first? Because that's the real issue. I think we can agree if you're if you've created scripts to buy a lot of product and then with the full intent of selling it, you are scalping, yes. But 
if somebody goes on and is like, you know what, I don't care about this mug. I'm just going to buy and then sell it. Are they also scalping? I mean, I made a video about this two years ago. I said collect collectors are just scalpers. I sold my Dragonite MB Hollow, my scalper. Yep. Gulag. What happened to Moral these days? Morals these days. Yeah, they're in the bin, Michael. Get that bread. I don't sell anything. Am I hoarder? Probably. I think we should start using the term botters instead of scalpers. Scalpers can be applied to people who buy but have little to no affiliation with the product itself. I think that's probably a fair, that's probably a good, um, Beanie's got some good takes today. Beanie, you've turned a leaf. I think we should start to differentiate between the two botters and scalpers, but I think scalping is just such a, like Fish said, it's just such a loose term these days that it's just like, I don't know where you draw the line and it's crazy. I agree about an individual selling being no biggie because there is competition, but buying out the market with bots eliminates competition and sets artificial pricing. True, true. What I find we, what I find like just, I just find this hmm, curious. I just find this interesting is that nobody had a problem. Everyone was very willingly engaging in the, the Japanese Pokemon card scalping reselling issue. They were having a great, they, in fact, they were doing it and they were having a great old time doing it, knowing they were paying more than retail to get this stuff. And it was fine. But then the second it becomes, the second it happens to the Van Gogh stuff, it's like, no, this is so bad. Guys, never again buy from a sec from the secondary market. Never buy from a reseller. I think if you want any of that stuff, right, the only way for you to get it now is to just buy it from a reseller. It's actually like, and if, if you want it that bad, go for it. There are some items there that I would, I was actually thinking, I'm like, well, it's over for me. So like, I can't get it retail. So now I have to decide whether I want it that badly. I think most collectors need to start, I think collectors need to start like, really thinking about how much they value what they're collecting. Like if you really want something from this Van Gogh drop and you're 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 an engaged collector, you do have options and it's like, are you okay with taking them? Like if you really want something that's now three times what it is, uh, what it should have been on the um, Pokemon Center website, maybe then it's it's time for you to like sell a card that's gone up in value to then buy it. And it's like not actually financially hurting you. You're at that point you're basically just trading. Also, yeah, but then, then, yeah, then if you buy from scalpers, you're part of the problem by giving them an incentive to continue the cycle. So, are you, is it, are you just as bad then? It's so... Because, <laughs> like, I want the little, I want the Eevee toy. I want the toy. I'm not gonna lie. I want the figure. Yeah, Jonathan C. I want, yeah, you want the figure too. I really wanted to get the figure, but I didn't so now i'm just like now what if i want it that bad i can just sell another card and then get it it's like 50 usd on ebay and how much was it at retail just wait and prices will drop no pro probably we don't know this is the whole thing it was 20 Whoa. sheesh <laughs> I said it before, but FOMO collectors are the real villains of this arc. Scalpers are going to scalp, but buying 10 items to get 10 cards is probably worse. Yeah, Josh, it's, it is a bit like that. It just will go in circles. No one is clearly right or wrong. I wish I could solve this. I wish I could solve this, honestly. But I, I do agree. I feel like there's no resolution to be had here. Like, it's really... The whole thing is just fried. How long do you recommend waiting until picking up the Van Gogh playmat? I really want the Corvenai one. 
Uh, I guess the the uh, the strategy with like because you're at, we're at this point where we know none of this stuff is going to restock. So if you really want it, um, you have no option but to just buy it off of eBay. Should we just go look at eBay? Okay, so this is eBay. This is all the stuff. I've just typed in Van Gogh Pokemon. I figure that's just going to cover mostly everything. Sixty USD playmat. Like, it is. It is insane. It should have been what twenty USD. Are you getting flashbang? Sorry, guys. I don't think eBay has a dark mode. This is crazy. 148. That's best offer though, surely. Yeah, so this is... Uh, I don't like this one. This is sick. 60 USD. Yeah, these are sold. USD, last item available. You all sick me. <laughs> Michael, chill. Daddy, chill. Uh, I'd have to go to 130 point. Yeah, but it's harder to read. I, I get it. We could go to 130 point. Um, hmm. Okay, so 60 USD is, 20, is what? Three times what it should be? It's 20 USD, right? Hey, Pokemon, what's good? 25 USD for every playmat. Okay, so it's about, it's two and a half. All right, it's two and a half times. Okay, now if you're a Japanese collector, that's so normal. That's just like, we're so used to that, right? Um, but I, I, I get that that can be very like jarring if you're, uh, if you've never seen that on like the Japanese side of merchandise, right? Um, yeah, I think it like, two, if it's like two and a half times retail now, I think by next week, it'll be like one and a half to two times. So like, if you're like, it's give and take, guys. Collecting is give and take. You really... I've, I've got to make another video. I've got to make a video talking about this. Collecting is give and take. So it's like, you can't... If you're collecting, right? You need to start... I think we as collectors need to start looking at buying stuff from... Buying stuff from scalpers, right? As trading. Like, you need to look at it as like, I have this... I'm very fortunate that I have this one card that is like... I pay ten dollars and now it's two hundred. I'm super fortunate, right? So now I'm at a crossroads. Do I embrace the gains there, or do I trade it for this other thing that I would like to get, right? So it's like you sell the card and make twenty times your money on it. Are you a scalper? Oh, gulag. But then you got the money to buy this other thing from a scalper. You get what I'm saying? Because if all this stuff on the secondary market is still as expensive as this, right? But we're in a one per person system or we're in a made to order system. It's the same thing, isn't it? Like if, it, if we're in a made to order system, but the pin sets are still selling with 200 USD. What's the issue then? There is none. You're basically trading. Otherwise, your other your other option is just not having it. I'm I'm just want to make this super clear. I'm not I'm not for scalping. Like we know that. Can we can we just all like get on the? Can we just be serious? Like I'm not saying go support scalpers. I'm trying to like 
I just want to get you guys thinking about this. Because the knee jerk is just like, scalp is bad. Hate everything, right? But think about it. We, we gotta be, we need to be more malleable, guys. We need to just like go a bit deeper. Do people actually think I'm here for scalpel? You actually can't be serious. You cannot be serious. There's no way. That would be some of the biggest D writing of all time if I was here for Scalpers. The only, <laughs> like, surely I have to be a Scalper myself at that point to be for them. I'm not. F I should. I should never have said anything. I should have lied. You know what I should have done? I should have lied, and I should have just been like, "Girl, I'm so angry. I hate it. Aren't we all angry? We're having a discussion." There was no reason this should have happened is the lesson Pokemon's... Yes, of course, unless it was strategic to start up hype. I don't think it was strategic to start hype. I I highly doubt it because the negative press is terrible. Carlos Alvarado, thank you for becoming a member. Thank you for being a member for two months. Your boss. So <laughs> thank you, Carlos. You're a legend. Sounds like something a corporate scalper should say. Yeah, how many more names you got for me? <laughs> I would honestly rather not have a thing I want than support scalpers. That is totally fine. Tietra, that's base. And I'm, it's cool that you're living by that mantra. It's fine. And that is cool. I'm not judging. I think that's, that's the most like, it's almost like a nihilistic way to like, just approach it. You're just like, it is what it is. Nah, so that's not, that's not nihilist. What's it, what is it when you're just like, it is what it is. It's base though. That's basically where I'm at. I'm, I'm at this, like, it is what it is. I can live without it. If I really want it, I will sell something and then buy it. And I don't think if you buy, if you're buying from resellers, you are making the situation worse. I think that's a bad argument. I disagree with that. I just think it's a bad, I, I think it's bad to then blame the people that are buying it um, from the secondary market. I made a video Maybe we should, do, do you, I'm just feeling like we should watch this video because I'm not trying to get you guys to go watch the video. I just spoke about this a lot two years ago. It is very Shogun Eye, yeah? Very. If you don't play the TCG, you're a botter. All right, let's do something. Okay, Leon. Wow. Uh, don't get me started on the, the Leon Hart stuff. I I sat that one out. Shameless self promote. Oh, I forgot there's a delay on stream. <laughs> All right, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna watch this. I've been wanting to do this for a while, actually. We're gonna watch this, right? Uh, it's called um, Collectors. Uh, just scalping. Nah, I said collectors just flipping. Okay. Hey, Tina Marie, good to see you. Hope you're well too. We're gonna do something a little bit meta today, right? We're gonna watch this. All right, so let's just see how how well these takes hold up, okay? I want to see how well this take us hold up. Twelve minutes. This is fine. I miss old J Love. I don't. This is making me cringe. Oh boy, this is that's a good drop. That's a real good drop. Today we're going to talk about something pretty serious. And, you know, this take might be a little bit controversial, but let me assure you that this is going to be the most important thing that you hear as a Pokemon card collector this is so bad. in 2021. And... Moving forward, 2022, 2023. This is something that I've been thinking about for a while and I've been sort of 
wrestling with the idea of how I do this video. And I settled on this because I feel like just talking about it candidly, just sort of letting it all flow out is going to be the best way get to, to the get point. My point Title's pretty controversial. So I know painful. that probably alerted some of you. Yes. It's quite outlandish and it's uh, maybe a little bit of a sweeping generalization. But I think when you it's listen so to what I have to say here today, you're going to reevaluate how you collect. You're going to reevaluate how you purchase things and you're going to reevaluate so how you see sales online, how you see advertising online, how you see marketing online. Okay, so I finally cooked. It took me a minute and 46 seconds, but I did make a point there, okay? It's very simple. The first thing you got to really come to terms with is why you collect. Why do you collect Pokemon cards? Do you collect them because you like the illustrations? You like the art? Do you collect them because, you know, maybe one, two, three, five, ten, fifteen 10, 15 years, they're going to be worth a little bit of money? That's... No secret. That is no secret when it comes to Pokemon cards that rare cards are worth money. And I think most of us have gotten pretty familiar with that, I don't know, idea in the last year or so, well, well and truly. But if you don't know why you collect, you will probably find that you are buying things endlessly. You know, you have no real cohesion to your collection. You're kind of just buying things as they come out. And a lot of the time when you're just buying things as they come out, you're pretty much just buying modern. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be the freaking be all end all of uh, whether modern's going to be worth it or whether you should stick to vintage or any of that jargon. It's been done. And I think it's been ran well and well and truly into the ground. But what I want you to figure out is why you collect. Are you collecting for some longer term goal? Do you have a goal? Do you just buy packs as they come out because it's fun to rip packs? If that's you, leave the video now because the rest, you know, is probably going to fall on deaf ears and you're not really going to understand what I'm talking about because it's not going to really apply to you. But if you have some kind of long-term goal, do you want to complete a master set? You know, do you want to have all the Growlithe cards in the world or all the Arcanine cards? I know there's somebody comes down to my Twitch stream always updating me on how far along they're coming with their Arcanine and Growlithe collection, which I think is fantastic, right? But do you have that? Do you have something that you're working towards? You know, for some people, that's a specific, a specific, that's a particular, <laughs> for some people, that's a specific card or a particular card. For some people, that's a graded card. And those people Perfect. work towards collecting that. And what that means is they don't buy anything else that doesn't get them towards their goal. They just primarily focus on finding that item and getting it and achieving what was I actually, at this point, I still don't know what I'm cooking. I do not know what I'm cooking. I absolutely have no idea what, what no, why did anybody like this video? I just was not cooking here. I, I'm going to get to a point. I, I feel like I trust my old self. I'm going to get to a point. Achieving it. And when they do achieve it, when they do find that item, they move on to something else and they try to look for another card that, you know, becomes their next grail. But they don't buy things that hinder their progress towards that grail okay in fact what they do is <laughs> they they specifically buy things that help them achieve that goal and okay. i can tell you right now i'm cooking in 2021 more than ever many collectors are using modern product to get to that goal it's it's honestly it's no secret it's no secret that collectors are doing that but for some reason, I just feel like people aren't really seeing that. And what that means is that they get sucked into this cycle of buying modern and just, you know, thinking that <laughs> they need to buy the next set that comes out because someone's saying that they should buy it. Worse, worse of all, they get, they get, I've spoken about this before. You get, you're going to love when I say this for the up 10th time. They get Influence. convinced and conned into believing that they need to invest in modern if they want to get anywhere. But if your goal is to get. Okay. Okay. So I cooked there, right? I cooked there. Because did we, did everybody, did everybody want the Van Gogh stuff because they liked, like, do you feel like you just wanted it because it existed? Or were you longing for like Van Gogh X Pokemon merchandise for an extended period? Yeah. Were you, were you sitting there going, man, I really want the, I really wish that they would just make Van Gogh X Pokemon stuff.
I'm, I'm a doubting. I'm doubting. I've been asking for Van Gogh Pika since 1995. <laughs> Dixie, Van Gogh is the artist I look up to as an artist myself. So Pokemon X Van Gogh is a dream for me. Fair. I love Kamiya's work. Fair. That's not look that's actually a crazy thing, is that like I look we glossed over. Everyone just said like Van Gogh Pikachu. It's actually now your Kimura Pikachu. It's the sixth Pikachu now your uh now your Kimura is illustrated now. I didn't want it to be honest. Most people miss out on the screen promos and see what they are worth now. There's like a couple of VG fans, but majority are just here for either FOMO or money. Dubinky? I got a pick up for 100. I took the risk. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of the FOMO has come from it just being another limited Pokemon merchandise drop in the same. Um, in the same spirit as the Edward, um, I can't say it. Ed I'm not gonna say it. Let's call them the screen promos. I'm not cultured enough. I'm not feeling like my usual soul. Look, there we go. Thank you, Kai. I guess I knew. I knew that's what it was. That's why I held back. All right. Let's let's see where else we've cooked, if anywhere. Um. Let's just go with my favorite example at the moment, a PSA 10 Alola Friends. If that is your goal, that card is your goal. And that's a, about a 3,000 AUD, maybe let's say, you know, 3,000, what's that? 2,500, 3,000 USD card, somewhere around there, right? I saw one sold for 3,000 AUD. So I know that card's coming down a little bit. If that's your goal, why would you buy anything that sort of hinders you from working towards that goal? You Based. wouldn't, right? Based. In fact, you, you'd buy actively to, to get there. You'd buy actively to get the funds to get there. And what that means now, right, in this day and age is buying modern and flipping it. And that's what it is. It's flipping modern, right? Because if you buy something, if you manage to hook a pre-order for... I shouldn't have played this video again. I shouldn't have... I should not have... <laughs> I should not have played this video. I'm going to get dragged for that. Let's use everyone's favorite example. This is the meta right now. The ultra pre Listen, let me just, let me post cook. Let's just reassess this. Okay. Okay. I feel like I need to do damage control now because I did not articulate that point very well at all. The, <laughs> I'm just, you know what? I'm just going to let me, I'm going to keep cooking. Premium collection. If you hook one of those for 200 AUD, I'm not sure what the US price is, but <laughs> say 150, 140, right? And you managed to sell it for four to five times that because everyone's hyping it up right now. Well, you know, you've got another four, five hundred dollars in your pocket. You're, you're one sixth of the way to getting to your Grail card. And if you're in this for personal collection reasons, you just want to have that card. Fantastic. If you're in this for investment reasons, why the fuck wouldn't you do that? That Damn. makes total sense. Why wouldn't you pre-order things that people want and are blindly buying right now and then flip it straight away to buy the cards that you actually want? It's free money. It's it's literally free money. It's it's 101 stuff. There's not much more to it. Okay, so that's a pretty controversial statement that's not gonna that has not aged very well at all. <laughs> this video is the reason the Van Gogh madness happened. <laughs> it literally is free money. I don't think anything has changed. This aged like cheese. Uh, listen. <laughs> it did not age well. <laughs> We're gonna come back. We're gonna we're gonna finish the video. We're we're gonna finish the video, right? So For some reason on you. I want to play music. Okay, so the concept of buying stuff that people want now and then selling it to buy other things you want. That 
is the point I was trying to make. Is that that's what a lot of people, that's what a lot of collectors do to get grail cards when they have an active goal. Because just buying stuff mindlessly doesn't get you closer to the thing that you want. So this is what I was saying earlier about a sustainable, it's almost like sustainable collecting. Okay. J Love wants me to be a scalper. At some point, I was a no, I stand by that video, right? I stand by I will go to my grave standing by that video. At some point, and I said this about 40 minutes ago, we need to move to we need to recognize that the system or the game of collecting has changed, right? Because I don't think I don't think you can just say like I just collect for fun. You, you, you're building a collection, right? If you're missing out on stuff, but you've got other stuff that's gone up in value and you want those things, I don't think it's bad to adapt. Sell the thing that you don't care about anymore that's also gone up in value and then buy the thing that you want, if that's the only way to get it. Can't win if you don't play, fair. And then if you don't, if you don't want to play, that's to also totally fine. It all goes to intent and scope. Buying an extra item to resell isn't the same as buying out of sight. So virtually no one gets what they want actual market price. Yeah, there's a big difference between buying out of sight and just getting an extra one to sell it. No. The, the reason why I'm calling it, I'm saying it's sustainable collecting, right? Is because the system, like the game has changed and there's two options. We can sit here and we can go in circles and we complain about how bad scalping and botting is, right? But at the end of the day, it doesn't actually get us anywhere because people that are saying just don't buy from scalpers and they won't have anything, anybody to sell to. It's like a drop in the ocean at this point because there are more people that are just buying it than not. So. If you sit here and, and and we just like complain about it, it's not actually going to get us anywhere. We've been, honestly, we've been people have been complaining about scalping since 2020 and nothing has changed. So it's not going anywhere. So that's, we need to just like call a spade a spade and say, it's not going anywhere. If you want to keep collecting though, collecting stuff that's limited, like the, the Van Gogh merchandise, then you need to just look at your collection again and sell something you don't need. And that's fine. Like, does it suck that you have to sell the thing that you like to get this other thing that you wanted? Yeah. But if you really want it that bad, you have an option outside of just like saying it sucks and then complaining about it. Maybe we need to complain harder. I don't think complaining is going to change anything. Or they make everything made to order. That fixes things too. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Think about it. If you don't buy it from X person, someone else might buy it from that person. Japan literally has made to order. Abraham, we actually argued with Mason about this earlier and we just said that he was stupid and that made to order is based. And made to order is based. Whatever happens in life, you simply cannot satisfy everyone. Blaming things on everything other than yourself is something that is easy. Complaining can quickly become moaning. Nobody likes moaners. I agree. I think complaining can just, has just become moaning. Because complaining doesn't change anything. Is the point of that video. Adapting will actually help you survive in the, the climate that collecting has changed to. I think I'm also, I'm not judging and shaming anybody that just says that like, I collect for fun. I also collect for fun too, right? And I wish it was, I wish it wasn't like this. If I had the option between it being like this and being like it was in the old times, of course I'd pick the way it was in the old times. So I could just like, buy stuff and don't have to worry about all this like min maxing and how I can buy that thing and sell it to get the money to buy this other thing. I would love it if it wasn't like that. I don't like this current system. It's exhausting. But if I want to keep collecting, I have an option. That is the option there to me. So I need to do, I need to adapt and I'm able to still collect and buy the stuff that I like. Am I opening raging sir? Um, if I can buy it at a decent price. But for me, I don't want it that badly that I would then go and sell something else that I have 
to justify spending the money on buying Raging Surf. So I'm making the decision to just say, I'm just going to not get Raging Surf right now. And that's fine. I don't care. You know, that's where I'm at right now. It's for $50 on TikTok. I mean, I'm in Australia, so it's a little bit more expensive. Proxies. It's not the same as a real thing, but it's at least something instead of nothing. At least for cards, different story for merch. Mm. I don't like proxies because I think that they, um, they dilute the market then and they have the risk of just like entering the real card pool, which is a problem. All right, let's just go and see the rest of this insanely freezing cold tape. YouTube right now, the current meta is to talk about ETBs, you know? I think we've all seen the videos. They're pretty much littered all over the, all over the platform right now. There's a specific YouTuber that is literally making a video about ETBs every single day. Like there is 12 minutes of content worth to talk about it every single day. There really isn't. I don't remember who that dig was at. Uh, but you could apply that to like so many different Pokemon card YouTubers. <laughs> why would you why would you waste your time buying ETBs and I'm an iron about whether it's going to go from one to 500 in f three or four years when you could just buy the latest product that everyone is hyping up and, and get that return in a week and then go and buy the card that you actually want or go and buy the thing that you actually want. You know, there's nothing wrong with doing that right now because it is so freaking easy it's it's literally 101 stuff you know if you want to achieve your goals quickly with pokemon card collecting that's the quickest way to do it if you if your goal is authentic and i'll come back on this i'll, I'll return to this point but if your goal is authentic or wholesome let's say you want a master set tag bowl right and you find a quick shortcut to get there well you know there's plenty of fish in the sea throw a line out someone's gonna buy it you know why wouldn't you why wouldn't you shoot your shot Okay, so do you, uh, I'm just going to put the question out and I'm okay to get judged by this because I said what I said, I got to live with it and I stand by it. A lot of what I said in this, I still agree with. Some of it I don't. But the point I'm trying to make is if you are trying to finish a master set and you can see that, um, let's, let's just straight up use the Van Gogh merchandise right here as the example, right? You're trying to get this last card you need. It costs $400, right? And you can see that the Van Gogh stuff is popping. And you manage to check out, let's say like um, the mat, uh, the Pikachu toy, like the Pikachu figure, the Eevee figure, and some other Van Gogh stuff. You get like one of each Van Gogh thing. And then you're able, and you're like, oh, if I sell all this right now, I'll have the money for that card. Are you part of the problem? Is that okay? Like, is that okay? Because you, you're technically taking advantage of the landscape that the scalpers have created but you're only selling like one of each thing. Like, is that wrong or right? Like, where does that, where does that land? It's the intent. One is for a collector, the other is literally for cash. You're chasing the bag, which is fine, but morally, no. Just the guy matching market price. You're essentially flipping it, but you're, you're only selling like one. The intent is clear. Let's just say like the intent is super clear. Like you're doing it because you want to get the cool card. Don't buy things you don't want. Because you're feeding into FOMO doing that. This is collecting is so interesting now. Whether you like it or not, you can't deny that it is a very interesting landscape right now. Dracius, thank you for the sub. Welcome to the channel. If you purposely buy it to sell, 
If you purposely buy it to sell, to buy another item for your collection, that's for you. No one else is going to complete your collection for you. So I don't see a problem with it. Why is the only like clean way of collecting, working hard and spending your money on the store? You are taking advantage of people that haven't got the chance to get the stuff for a normal price. On the other hand, it's always the choice of the person if he wants to buy at that price. That's what I'm saying. You're that this is what I was saying like an hour ago. You're essentially like trading. Uh Asteri, thanks for base stream planes landing. Catch you later, Asteri. Take it easy. You're essentially trading. Cause you don't have to buy the sculpt or like the the um the up price item. Like you don't have to buy it. But there is gonna be someone else that has more money that is just like fine i'm gonna go to ebay and just buy it and so you're basically trading at that point so there are losers here the people that are choosing the people that have to sit there and go you know what fine i'm not collecting it i'm, I'm gonna sit out there and go they are losing because they don't get to engage in the fun however i would i will say this about collecting the beautiful thing about it is that there is always something else and this is why I was saying, like, did you even want the Van... Like, how do you know that you wanted the Van Gogh stuff until it was in front of you? There's something else. There's always, like, something else you can collect. And you just have to concede, like, okay, the Van Gogh stuff is really cool, but I'm going to just pass on it because it's expensive. And there's going to be there's going to be something else that you can go and collect where you don't have to break, you know, your bank account to get it. Should we start a no buy November where we test out what will happen to prices if we don't buy from eBay for a month? Um, it wouldn't work. The problem is that it wouldn't work because it hasn't worked for like the last 15 years. Just go look at sneakers. We cannot collectively work together like that as a society. I think the human race has proven that, not just on the collecting side. The rage comes not because they can buy it at higher, but they're creating a market they cannot participate in. That's where the heart of the rage comes from. I shouldn't have to trade if I was given an opportunity to get it for a retail value and couldn't because someone decides to script the website to have a leverage on those who want products. True, you shouldn't have to trade, but I guess what I'm saying is there is an option there for you if you want it that badly. And you have a sustainable option. Because you can't get everything. It's like, it's too hard. Right now, it's too hard to hit on everything. Aaron, we were saying this earlier. That, yeah, the, the buy limit was that a huge screw up. Like, it should not have been 5 or 10. It should have been max 2. And it realistically should, should have been 1. I've asked that question a lot before, Brandon. If cards were, wor were, were worthless, would people still be collecting? And I think the hard, the hard truth is no, they wouldn't because there were very, very few people online sharing their collections in the social media age before everything got expensive and valuable again and popular pre 2020. There would still, there would still be some people. Yes, there would still be some people. Of course there would still, but there would just not be as many. Yeah, there would still be some people that there just wouldn't be as many. There would be a significantly um, fewer amount of people collecting. Like a large majority would not be here. I think anyway. Do you see a problem with people buying concert tickets and then just reselling them for double, triple? <laughs> Great question. I like it when you guys ask confronting questions like that. Uh, hmm. Yes. Now I need to live with the contradiction there with anything else, anything else I've said in the last hour and a half. <laughs> okay, let's, let's just think. Uh, so my first answer to that is yes. All right. How does that, where does that align with collecting and flipping hmm. I guess when you're flipping a concert ticket you could apply this to anything else it's like if you're flipping a concert ticket to buy a card that you want 
If you're flipping a PS5 to buy a card that you want, where's the line? Where is the line indeed? Whew. You're taking it from the concert fan. Yeah. Hmm. People only get mad when it stops them from buying what they want. I think if you had to like succinctly summarize this whole thing, that would be the general, that would be the line. That would be it right there. What about just go work for that? You shouldn't have to work harder to buy the things that you want. You know what I'm being like, we could do this thing. It's pretty crazy. It's a very, the, the flipping thing and my take on it is that it's like adapt or die. Where die is just like you miss out. I think the world moves too fast to want it to be better. Like to want them, to want the, uh, the companies that are making this stuff to like fix their systems. I think the, the world is just moving too far. Anchor, that's a great point. Can we all agree that something feels icky about scalping, but they also want the scalpers there so that their card prices go up? Because we, as collectors, we like it when our collection goes up in value. It makes you feel better about the thing that you that you have. I think a, a lot of collectors will be lying to themselves if they weren't influenced by the value of their collection. As always, there will be people that don't care. But I think a lot of people are, are, are looking at like, man, I really, I'm so glad I have the UPC. The I'm so glad I have the celebrations UPC. Sealed. Why? Because it's worth a little bit more money now. Mm, scalpers are the only reason why value goes up. That's, they're a reason. I'm not. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry. You clarified suck on it. My bad. Yeah. They're not the only reason why. Yeah. Like popularity hype around a certain Pokemon or a particular item, um, whether an influence is talking about it or not. If I sell something for, um, for retail to someone, but then they go and sell it for market price. Like there's always going to be those people. What's the counter? I'm confused. Sorry. Let's um let's finish this horror bad video because we're all in now. Right. We're here. Let, I'm gonna get through this. I'm just gonna see how many more bad takes are gonna have in the next five minutes. You'll achieve your whole now. Someone's gonna you know. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Throw a line out. Someone's gonna bite. You know why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you shoot your shot? Right. You'll achieve your wholesome goal. Right. Wholesome goal. What what what's wholesome? Right. You know because at the end of the day collections become worth something and everybody has their sell point my sell point i don't know where it is right and i i don't i get asked this all the time you know when why don't you sell some of your your cards and buy something buy something else or when are you going to sell you know you got so many monies or whatever when are you going to sell one i don't know i don't know what i don't know where my sell point is right but i have one i have one i'm only human you know i found that card i love it okay okay good point here okay Interesting, interesting story here. So I'm talking about the Marnie from Shiny Star V, Shiny Star V, right? What is my sell point? I actually found my sell point in Japan because there was something else I wanted to buy. So I wanted to buy a Karen's Umbreon uh, from uh, Pokemon VS, right? So I wanted to buy Karen's Umbreon, but it was $1,300. So, and I also wanted to pay for my accommodation in Japan. So my sell point was the price that I got offered um, at the Japanese card store, which was $400. And I ended up selling three Shiny Star V Marnie. And then I was, then I had $1,200. And then I bought the, the Karen Zombrion. So that was my sell point. So I basically traded at that point. So I found it. And I feel, I feel like we will find, like you find your sell points. You get like... The point I'm trying to make there is 
the Karen's Umbreon, which I wanted, was right in front of me, and I had an option. I had multiple options. One of them was to just not get it. The other was to be like, complain about it and be like, man, it's so expensive. Why is it so expensive? The third was to just accept that that's the situation. That's what it was. And I actually had an out if I wanted it that bad. And so, and, and I took it and then I got the Karen's Umbreon. And now I feel better. Like my collection feels better. Not because the Karen's Umbreon is expensive and I've got it because I've got a card that I wanted and that I look at, I'm like, Damn, I'm so glad I have that now. I found my sell point. But if I was just gonna if I was just gonna sit here and complain about um vintage cards going up in price and how much it sucked, then I would not have the card in my binder right now. So yeah, you have to just adapt. I feel like you kind of just gotta adapt if you want to keep collecting. But I only need one. The other few that I have, you know, if if push came to shove, I'd sell it. Or if my Grail card was right in front of me and I had the monies I needed and I could sell them and get the money and get my Grail card. Am I going to say no? What the hell? I swear to God, I did not watch this video before the stream. If I'd watched the video before the stream, I wouldn't have played the video. That is insane. I, whoa, that's crazy. I can't believe I did that. That's insane. I literally talked, I did what I, yes. I'm not a hypocrite. <laughs> I did what I said. That's I that's crazy. That I'm actually surprised at the timing of that. That was actually kind of weird. That's kind of freaky in a way. I mean, really? <laughs> Would you say no? If 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 the car that you really wanted was there and you you had a way to get there? This is why collectors ultimately are in in a, in a sense, investors, because you're not going to bury yourself with your cards. Maybe there's one or two that you'll take to your grave. But if you had a card that everybody wanted and you sold it and it meant, you know, another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 grand in your pocket, it meant realizing some other dream, starting a business, buying a house, getting that Tesla. I don't know. Would you move it? Eventually you would. Okay, this I'm, is why I'm cooking here. you need to really hone in on what you're digesting and watching because by uh, i think i just like was ranting about other youtubers cringe arc honestly cringe getting sucked into the modern cycle this year you are fueling somebody else's dreams right you're not fueling your own if you don't know why you're buying cards if you don't know why you're collecting things and you're just sort of buying what comes in front of you what somebody tells you to invest in then you're not actually achieving any of your goals you're fulfilling somebody else's you're lining somebody else's pocket you might buy that etb or that ultra premium collection for 800 dollars, right whatever it ends up being when this thing finally drops but that guy's probably going to go and buy some you know low print low pop psa card some kind of promo that's going to return them because you know eventually they do decide to sell it way more than your ultra premium collection is this is, why is old you attacking me? This is a very, this is a, a weird video. It, it's part of it has aged well, other parts haven't. It's definitely a parcel in time. Uh, Formula One man, thank you for two months of Senpai, you legend. I'll get your coffee next time I see ya. This is a weird, This it's like stuck in this weird, it's definitely a very 2021 video. It's odd. Like a, a lot of, some of it holds up, some of it doesn't. There's, there's good and bad takes in this. I've, I've actually thought about, mm, I've thought about like delisting a, a bunch of different old videos, but I said what I said. So it's like, I actually think it's better to keep them because you can actually go back and retrospectively look at them and see like where you got it wrong, where you got it right. I think it's just important. Um, somebody said before, we put too much emphasis on being a hypocrite, on worrying about if we're hypocrites or not, which I think is a good, pretty, pretty good point. So if you want to get the ultra premium collection because you like it and you want to put it on your shelf, go for it. By all means, go for it, right? But know that if that's not your actual goal, you're just getting, you're getting it because you think that it's going to help you achieve your goals later on and it won't. Because modern is just a flip fest. Everybody's buying it and everybody's flipping it and they're moving on to the next thing. The second a set comes out, there's a reason why nobody talks about it anymore. 
See, that's what I'm saying. There's pods have held up and pods have it. This pod has held up because this is still happening. Evolving the next thing is just a flip fest. Everybody's buying it and everybody's flipping it and they're moving on to the next thing. The second a set comes out, there's a reason why nobody talks about it anymore. Evolving Skies was the shit. It was the set that you had to buy, that you had to invest in, that you had to put, you know, a, a case of in your in your closet. I'm calling anybody out. You know who you are. <laughs> because then when the next thing came out that was more popular and more exciting, you pull that case out within a month and you sell it. And you don't get any return because everybody's moved on from the set. Nobody's hyped about it. Nobody's excited about it anymore. That's so two months ago. And you know what? Celebrations will be so two months ago too. And when celebrations... Okay. Good and bad takes here. So I guess if I could do this video again, I would say that the um, the immediate... Like the short... Sorry, the immediate. The short term between buying that stuff you're going to lose, but it always hits a point where then it just bounces up. And so getting, I think the point I was trying to make here, which I didn't articulate very well, was that if you get sucked into um, the, like the day one prices, you will lose if you're trying to, if you're trying to like quickly flip it, but long-term you can't really lose that because Evolving Skies and Celebrations just went off tap. So it was a very poor example. Although, I don't know, like, because Evolving Skies is insane. But even Evolving Skies has come down. Yeah, Evolving. drops. It's <sighs> going to be so two months ago when VMAX Climax hits as well. I just missed two subs, but thank this you. cycle forever. Legend. The only person who wins, the only people, rather, who win are the ones that keep selling you the con. And they're out there. You know who they are. Just look around. I'm not going to call out names. I'm not going to point fingers because I want you to figure it out. Eventually you will. I'm sure you will. The more we talk about it and the more we come to terms with this idea and this concept that's out there that is a real, real thing, the more we normalize talking about it, the faster we're going to get to that point where those people can't take advantage of hype anymore. And that's, you know, that's where we'll end up. And there'll be a new meta and this will get replaced. But in the meantime, you'll be able to achieve your goal through whatever means it ends up being. Or you might take what I'm saying in this video and <laughs> you might start doing it. But I'm not, I'm not revealing the secret. This isn't something that people don't want me to talk about or people don't want to, want to say out loud because they, they're afraid that somebody else is going to start doing it and it's going to cut into their lunch. This is obvious stuff. If you haven't figured it out by now, you just haven't been paying attention. And if you think that this stack here I got is some kind of stupid flex and then I'm absolutely walling out here let me assure you that the real people that know what they're doing they got way more than what i got here peace okay so this was a terrible video and i'm very glad i've left this part of uh youtube behind because there were some freezing cold takes in it but there were some decent points there the point of sustainably collecting which i spoke about before we started watching that i still stand by if you want to keep collecting, if you want to keep collecting. Otherwise, your only option is to just sit out. I think you having this conversation today has kind of opened my eyes a little bit. Because mm, sometimes I feel like, well, I speak to and engage with a lot of other collectors that are like-minded and I, then what ends up happening is you end up in like this echo chamber of like, this is the only way. And I do sometimes forget that there are people that just want to buy stuff because they like it. And then they just kind of get left behind. They don't want to play this metagame. We're missing the point here. You can buy pretty much as much set as you want. People literally could not buy the Van Gogh stuff. It doesn't, yeah, KBF, it doesn't exactly apply. It doesn't apply very cleanly to the Van Gogh stuff. But we didn't... I guess at the end, like, at the end of the day, if you want to buy the Van Gogh stuff off of eBay, you shouldn't feel bad. Like, you shouldn't feel shamed or judged for doing it. If, if it's something you want to do, my recommendation, like, what I would do is wait a little bit longer. Like, I would not buy it now. 
I think buying it right now is like the absolute worst play you could make. If there's no such thing as market price, there also probably wouldn't be a TCG to collect. Otherwise, Pokemon would just sell the cards individually to people. If there was no such thing as market price, there pro also probably wouldn't be a TCG to collect. I think the biggest takeaway, like one, another, another key takeaway from this discussion today that I think we can all agree on is the intent. It's probably the, the conversation needs to shift when we, when we talk about scalpers. Um, oh, but even then, like the intent, this is, it's such a messy, this is just a messy, muddy topic. It's why I didn't want to make a video on this. I wanted to do a stream because I kind of just wanted to have an open, open mic discussion. This whole thing sucks. It's just, it's, it's just sucks. <laughs> if I were to throw Pokemon Center a bone, I feel like they learned their lesson from Special Delivery Pikachu and that's why they have so many Van Gogh Pikachu cards, but not with merch stuff. Yeah, fair. They probably just misread the merch interest and were like, the promos is what everyone's going to be after. But they ended up being the merch. Should those upset about modern card prices only open retail packs? They have to purchase singles. TPCI's larger sets with wearer pool pulls influence prices naturally. This was not the case seven years ago. <laughs> That's such a hard question to answer. These questions are so hard. Should those upset about modern card prices only open retail packs? Well, English modern card prices are in the bin. So I think you should just buy the singles and not open the packs. But opening packs is fine. I don't open packs anymore, English. Um, unless it's like a, a content thing that I wanted to do, which is what I did with 151. Funny thing of what if the items didn't come with a promo, how many would want them to act the same way they did in Amsterdam? Hmm. Mm. Uh, I think the general consensus is that the merch, like Formula One was saying as well, the merch was so good that it was always going to go this way. So the, the merch actually held. The merch is what sustained this whole thing, or like fueled it. Heck to age, damn, still online, bro? It was just, why not? Sunday morning. The point he was bringing up is that are you a scalper for not paying retail for a pack that is selling? That's confused me. I might be dumb. I may be stupid. Clay and Cat Clays. No, the Pokemon Center promo is not a holo. That was fake news. It's definitely not. I think it does come down to volume. Yeah. Rob, I think it does. The point... I think the point that I was... The point that I was trying to make in that collectors are just flippers video that I did not articulate very well is that... I think as a collector, you need to just sort of, you got to adapt a little bit if you want to keep collecting. And that means partaking in this little dance. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on stuff. That may, you know, because, and, and if you, if you just like buying one for me, one to sell, 
you can you can hang on but then it just as okay 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 let me call right if they're gonna put the two per person made limit right you have an you have an out but it's not pleasant should you engage should you engage in it hmm. up to you i'll leave it up to you but i'm not gonna diss people that are going one for me one for one for ebay to get the money to then buy the other thing that they want now if you're buying five or ten i think you you're making your part of the problem and you've got to live with that tropical and ichiban dan just became members but i didn't get a proper noti for it moonlight pokemon became a member I don't know if something is glitching or a lot of people are becoming members, but thank you guys. <laughs> something is definitely glitching. Saxgavan became a member. <laughs> thank you very much. Something's definitely glitching. Rock Sandy became a member. No, nah, I think something's glitching. I think I'm going to turn over laser. J Love and Opossum stream in the future. I do want to get him on. Because we, like, Opossum and I are friends. We disagree on a lot of stuff. I think it would be a pretty worthy conversation. We agree on a lot and we disagree on a lot and that's fine what i'm saying is if people are arguing everything should be available all the time at retail then why are you okay paying an lgs 90 for pelt why not pay msrp troy he's spitting he's spitting roman opens cards thank you welcome to senpai you legend thanks for becoming a member They should have made the Van Gogh promo like a capture. You get asked a random trivia question about Van Gogh during your stay at the museum. And if you get it right, then you get a promo. Hey, I like that. That's fun. I think, okay, if we're gonna take just one, absolute one takeaway, is that made the order fixes this whole thing and is super based. Like made the order is most definitely the answer. If you don't play the TCG, you're a botter. I disagree. Peter, I've seen you say that a few times in the chat. I disagree. You don't have to play the TCG to enjoy Pokemon cards. I think it's a pretty, um, it's a, that's a gatekeeping mindset. Grizzly Gross, thanks for coming down, man. I have not streamed as much as I would have liked in the last month. What about the Unagaba promos? Were people wrong to buy a bunch of random items in order to get the max 10 promos? I guess the issue is that they're stuck with that random stuff. I got 10 max promos because I wanted all that merch. I remember what I bought. I bought two playmats and I bought the playmat holder. It was the red one um, that had the legendary dogs on it. And it's like a better playmat. It's like the Japanese playmat holder that has like sort of like the faux leather on it. I think anybody who bought all the merch and then got stuck with it just got stuck with the merch. That's a bit of an L for them. What's your take on how they dealt with the Yunagaba promos? Was it much better because they stuck at least lasted almost 24 hours? If the Van Gogh merch lasted for 24 hours, we'd be happier. From, I think from what I rem well, from what I understand, you could only get the Van Gogh, you could only get the Pikachu with the gray felt hat promo when you bought Van Gogh merchandise. So that was probably a mess up. They should have just made it when you buy anything on the website. They would have made more money that way too. Mm. Ah, 
that's just like you're not we're not owed any of this stuff so it's like did they handle it better i mean they did i guess it it was handled better in japan because it didn't have the entire world trying to access it at the same time or well, the entire world it just had japan trying to access it whereas like the pokemon center us stuff had all of america more people, so that's why I went faster. Mm, I don't know, it's hard to say. It was very difficult to ch check out for the Unagaba promos as well, though. No, it wasn't, actually, it was super easy. What am I talking about? America equal the world. I know, I'm getting sucked into the same mentality that I dislike. The absolute best way to fix this would have been purchase them at one per person. Actually scheduling the drop so that you didn't have to, you didn't access it via like random links that people were sharing on servers, Twitter, um, that weren't getting scripted as well, weren't getting botted. Would have also helped. And that's basic. That's as that's basically it. One per person would have just fixed a lot of this. Made the order would have solved the entire thing. There's a there's a big demand for wanting it right then and there. Since so the, there's like a feeling that it has to be then and there. Right there, right now. Can't wait. I've seen no evidence of anyone botting Pokemon Center. Mm. It's a good point, GW. I. I think it's a safe assumption. Lottery system would be crazy in the West. I'm, I'm just actively reading chat here because you guys are this, there's a lot of opinions happen They're like there's just like a lot of different takes here what up Kira see man okay primal Luke is kind of speeding take on taking a moral stance on all this is futile I I agree I think it is futile Overthinking it can mentally exhaust you, potentially causing you to give up what you cherish. Realize you're powerless here and just let it go. Seriously. It is... It is arguably defeatist, but it is a much better way to go about it. I'll tell you this. I've enjoyed collecting a lot this year, where, as a lot of people have really gotten turned off by it, but I've enjoyed it because I s literally stopped caring about what was releasing now and just found other things to collect. I just found other ways to enjoy the space and there are a lot of other ways to enjoy it. And I think a lot of my frustrations, ordinarily I'd be like super frustrated by this, but the reality is that all I can kind of do is just laugh because I don't care anymore. Like I do care, but I'm not invested enough to let it emotionally impact me. Does that make sense? Because I'm just doing other stuff. I'm actually distracted by other things. It's not like I don't have time for collecting. No, I'm distracted by other parts of collecting. Dark Ray, was just wondering if you're going to do a goodbye Twitch stream. So I've been flirting with the idea of just streaming on Twitch as well. So if you don't know, I do have a Twitch. <laughs> I mean, this is where I started. Twitch.tv slash OKJLO. Um, but I want to experiment. I've been wanting to experiment a bit more with content creation and just create content that isn't about Pokemon. I don't want to restream. No, I don't. I like being able to personally interact with the stream. I have been flirting with the idea of creating content that isn't about Pokemon, Pokemon cards. 
and I want to use Twitch for that. So it's almost going to be like a soft relaunch where I'm just going to stream over at Twitch and do other things that I wouldn't, um, that aren't Pokemon related. Because I don't want to do that on the OKJ OK Love channel right now. I'm not at that point. Yeah, Jax, that was the point. Like, I, I didn't want to make a video about this topic because I feel like if you make a video about, um, heated topics that have like happened in the moment that it's like that's your stance it's like there's no um discourse people drop a lot of comments but there's no like dialogue and like you just get my take but like just one condensed quick 10 minute version because it has to be a video and it's just like very reactionary it's in the moment it's why i didn't stream yesterday um i must refer a conversation it's a bit awkward because like, it, like you can watch this and get called flip fluffy, which is fine. Like I wouldn't stream online if I cared about that a lot. Um, I just think it was worth actually having dialogue. I didn't want to make a video. Whether it was worth it for me, oh, sheesh, we had some crazy takes here. I think I called a hypocrite a lot online. Um, I think that's just part and parcel with talking about different topics. I think that is something, I don't think anybody can live without contradicting themselves. It's really difficult because things change. Things are really fluid. And there's a, there's a big difference between someone that is like, um, like if you contradict yourself, it's different to being a hypocrite. I think anyway, I think a hypocrite is just like an, someone who's just flip flopping to appease people. I'm not trying to appease anybody with these opinions. So I'm glad you like the stream, basically. I should have just said that, hey? Yeah, Darkrai, like, Nuzlocks. Like, I want to play... I've been wanting to play, like, a lot of niche Japanese games. Because I think they're just fun to, like, play. One, it, it's one part of it. And just to show people as well, like, really cool Japanese games that you might not have heard of. But I want to do that over at Twitch. The scalpers should be holding the merch long-term and dumping promos. The merch will have real long-term value. Probably, yeah. Well, Hikari Moon, the only way to get better at that is to just like keep debating and talking about stuff and you'll, you'll sort of just like get better at understanding how you feel about things. But if you don't talk about how you feel about things, you never really like, and you don't materialize them. Um, They'll never become solid. They'll just stay liquid forever. It's not hypocritical to change your opinion. It's hypocritical to hold conflicting opinions depending on the situation. True. I will give you my Van Gogh promo if you say a Van Gogh in Dutch. I can't say it. I can't say it. Uh, some people are coming to the stream, Fresh Cup, and said that... The museum is getting a restock in October. I did not see the tweet. I did not see the concrete, um, that statement myself. I'm just going off of chat. I enjoy collecting because I just like cute and cool looking Pokemon. Interacting with other people while playing the game. If I want to pull or get anything crazy, then that's a cherry on cake. That's where I'm at right now. When it comes to collecting, I'm just like looking, finding old cards, trying to finish, um, try, trying to build up artist collections and finding old cards. I'm like, that card is just cool and I would like to have it. And that's it. And I just like source it, find it, buy it. I'm like, I'm, I'm happy. I generally am staying away from modern because it's just really frustrating at the moment. If you get like, a, it's just, it's too up and down. It fluctuates too much. I think people made that up. I haven't seen a source for that. Okay. I do hope they do something for people in person, to be honest. Online, I kind of get it. It's not for us, it's for people who went that experience it. Yeah, it's probably, it's, it's a much better way of doing it.
I think we've basically covered everything. There's there's not a whole lot more to cover. Somebody said if Pokemon, I think Clan and Clay said if Pokemon got cancelled, would you still collect it? Well, it depends what kind of cancel we're talking about here. It's a very loaded question. What if the Pokemon TCG Classic is made to order? That 100% should be made to order. Definitely should have been made to order. I think if it was made to order, less people would have bought it. We all know what happened with Pokemon TCG Classic. We all know what happened there. That got botted. That is getting scalped hard because everyone saw how, like, there was an instant, like, this is going to be valuable angle, and it got scalped. We can definitively say that without any proof, I feel like, anyway. <laughs> um, I did not manage to get a pre-order for the Classic Collection, so no. Do I want it that badly? Mm, I don't know yet. I don't think so. Potter for the community. I think that should have been made to order and that would have just solved like a lot of problems around that. Like made to order just fucking works, dude. Why do I never win a lottery on PC Japan? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Do not have that answer. Pokemon Classic is sitting on GameStop Canada website. Hey, yo. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, I don't want the Western version. I just want the Japanese version. So I'm not going to get the English version. I'm going to pay the reseller price on the Japanese version. And I'm okay with that. I already came to that decision a few months ago. Because I wanted that badly. All right, I think we've covered absolutely everything that I could have covered there. I think we had a pretty healthy dialogue. I made an idiot out of myself, so I think we've ticked basically every box for this stream today, um, which she just absolutely loves to see. Love it. I am... Oh, by the way, thanks for all... The... There was like a, a lot of uh, really good feedback on that last video, so thank you very much for that. If you watched the last video, you guys are legends. Um, thanks for all the the resurging support. It's been good to be back. I definitely have missed being active with um, content creation, but I I definitely feel like I'm back. Um, yeah, I definitely feel like I'm back into the flow of it. So you will see more videos. Uh, I think you're just gonna see better videos. I'm going quality over quantity at the moment, so. Do it, don't say it, Jayla. I'm working on a fun one now. I'm working on an interesting one now, actually. I'm working on two, but the one that I was scripting yesterday, I actually really quite like. it would be interesting to see how you guys receive it. Thank you to everybody who came down to the stream today. You guys are legends. Thank you to everybody who um, became a member. You guys rock as well. If you re-became a member, you're a legend. I am, well, that's the wrong word. Because I'm a boomer and I don't have all my um, my stream deck isn't set up. These are all my socials. If you're on the Discord, yeah, join the Discord. It's pretty fun in there. Harry West, peace out. Let's see you, Illinois. Thank you, everybody, for coming down. I hope that was fruitful for you. God, I wish I didn't play that up. <laughs> like, I, I am and I am okay. I am and I'm not okay with um, the collecting. Collectors just flip this video replay, but... We move. <laughs> when are we expecting Twitch stream? Also, what game are you going to play first on there? Maybe in the next like two, three weeks. Let me just sort of like re relaunch that. I'll work, I'll work something out. And I don't know what game yet, but I'll figure something out. KBF, thanks for coming down. Legend of Luke was good to have you here. Inza, thank you again. Hey, thank you for coming. Dark Ray, peace out. Vayla, have a good one. Adrian, cheers for hanging out. Lucky Mon, peace. Jags, take care. Thanks for your interesting input. Frank Ramirez, peace. Grizzly Grows, have a good one, bro. Primal, I love it when you... Yeah, I'm going to get you... I'm going to get Primal Lugia on for a live stream, too. I think that'll be fun. Shmeli, peace. No, you're a legend. Brandon, have a good one, dude. Shabland, take care. Luke, have a good one. Vandermeer, Fresh Cart, Brandon. Kenne, Luke Gale, R2D2, Joshua. 
Big Snapple. Sudazara, have a good one, dude. Thank you for everything. Apples, peace. Roman opens cards. Have a good one, dude. Side of me. Tim Morn, thank you for Welcome to Senpai. Thank you for becoming a member of your legend. All right, guys. Corner there. I'll see you. I might see you during the week. I might do a mail day stream. Let's see how I feel. All right. Take care. Thanks for having me.